next experiment. Here, what I have? I have a very simple arrangement here. I've got something like an inclined plane. Here, you can see the height here is this much. Okay? The height here is much more. See here. The height here is this much. The height here is this much. So, there is a difference. Can you see that? It is an inclined plane. If it is an inclined plane, if I put any cylinder on top of the inclined plane, what will happen to that? It will roll. It will roll down, not roll up. If I put here, where, where will it go? It will come only here. Will it go up? Will it go up like this? No, sir. Why? Why? I keep it here. Due yes. to gravity, sir. Due to gravity. Somebody wants to say something. Tell me. Yes. Yes, quickly. I have so many experiments to show you. You have to boldly say, I want only wrong answer. Did I not tell you at the beginning? Boldly you should say whatever comes to your mind. Whether it is right or wrong, don't worry at all. That is how science progresses. I already told you. Gravity, sir. Gravity, I thought, is down. Yeah. It is going down along the incline. When you say it is gravity, is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. There is a component of gravity, G sin alpha, where alpha is the angle of the inclined plane. That is what is pulling down. That is correct. But why it should be coming down? Why not stay here? Why is it coming down? Because all objects want to have minimum potential energy. You all know it. If I keep something here, what is the potential energy of this object? MGH. MGH. If I draw a release, if I release it, what will happen? It comes down. Why? Because the potential energy is more. It wants to keep the potential energy minimum. So it comes down to the ground. If it is here, it will come to the floor. If I do it outside on the balcony, it will go to the ground floor. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, if there is a water at a higher level, it comes down, rolling, because it wants to have potential energy minimum. If I am standing, anybody can hit me and I will fall down. After I fall down, whatever you kick, it will only damage my body, but I will not be able to go down. Already I have gone down. My center of gravity is very low. While I am standing, my center of gravity is somewhere in the middle. You understand what I am saying? So... Every object wants to keep the potential energy minimum. So this cylinder, when I keep it there, the potential energy is more. Why, sir? Is more. And when I release it, it comes down. What are you? Somewhere there is some dust. So it comes sir, down. Sir, why it wants uh, minimum potential energy? Because that is corresponding to the stable equilibrium. You will study about it later. Whenever an object is in the lowest potential energy, it is much more stable. Therefore, in the ship, big ship, you know, there will be a lot of part which will be inside the, it will be inside the ocean. Therefore, what they will do? They will put a lot of sandbags at the bottom. Why they put sandbags at the bottom? They want to bring the center of mass, center of gravity to the very low point. Then, even if there is a movement of the ship, due to some cyclone and all that, it will not topple. If the center of gravity is much above, if everybody is on top deck, all the people, if they do like that, it will fall. Therefore, where is the engine of a uh, boat kept? You know, I mean, what is that? My steam boat, no? The steam engine. Center of gravity. They will always keep it at the bottom because it's the most heaviest object, the engine, the diesel engine or the steam engine, whatever engine, and that will be kept below because they want the center of gravity to be low, then only it will be stable. Even if it rocks like this, it will not topple. Okay? Now, I have somebody, there will be always one fellow who will not follow the rule. You know it on the road, you know everywhere. Correct? If you should say you should not do it, they will only do that. This fellow is crazy. If I put it here, he will go. Look at this. Can you see what is happening? When this fellow is very, very law abiding, I keep it here. The fellow says, I'll go down. That is my nature. Whereas this fellow is completely a revolutionary fellow. I can put it here. This fellow go up. What, what explanation I can give now? I don't know. 
Can anyone help me? What happened? Why is it going up here? I can't believe. Just now I said, everybody wants to be the lowest potential energy configuration. And this fellow obeys perfectly without any problem. Whereas this fellow, if I keep it here, he stays there. But if I keep it here, he has got the cheek to go up. How? My Shape of the object, sir. Shape of the object, because of that, the law will be failed. Law will not obey, right? Mass is I, I'm a big man, so I won't obey gravity. You'll say like that. Now, I quickly tell you, you observe what happens to this point. I keep here. What is the height at which it is there? Here. Now, see what happens. Where is that point? Is it at the same point or it has come down? Down, sir. It has come, come down, down, sir. Can you see that? So, this fellow is also following the same rule. Unfortunately, because of the shape and because of the type of inclined plane I have, when I am keeping here, his center of mass, which is almost along this line and along this plan, plane, where the plane intersects this line along the axis, that is a place we have the center of gravity. And it is much higher here. And because it is going down due to the slope on the sides, you find it has come down. So the potential energy here is minimum. Potential energy here is maximum for this shape and for this kind of an arrangement. Therefore, he is obeying. It looks as if he is not following the rule, but he is perfectly following the rule. Can you understand that? What is the center of gravity here? What is the point through which the gravity will act? So that if I give an opposing force at that point, I will be able to balance. Do you follow what I'm saying? What is the center of gravity of a uniform object like this? I have to be at the center. I'm able to... Now that is the center of gravity. Can you see that? Similarly, if I balance it here, I will be able to balance it here. Almost. Okay? So when I keep it here, it is much higher. That point is much higher from the table. And therefore, it wants to go down. When it is rolling down, you see here, this fellow is going actually down. And therefore, he is moving to, towards, moving towards low potential energy. Good. Now, I will do another nice experiment here. What is that? I have got two metal pieces. I don't know whether you can see that. You can focus on that. I have two metal pieces. And I have two tubes. This one. This PVC tube, we all know, we use it for water lines as well as in the electrical wiring. And this is actually copper. It's a copper, metal. Okay, copper tube. They are very expensive. Both are hollow, cylinder. Correct? You have a hole here. They are also good. Now, I have a small metal piece. I'm going to, please come. Uh, sorry. I'm going to drop it and he's going to catch. You put your hand down and catch it. I'm going to drop through this. See? comes out, right? Can you see that? I'll do once more. I'm dropping at the top. Immediately you see, it comes out through the tube. Can you see that? Hello? I'll do yes, once sir. more. I'll do yes, once sir. more. You have to do many times to see that it works. Now I remove this and take the another metal piece. And then I drop through the same PVC tube. It also comes out. Slightly at a lower level. So that they can see the computer. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. So it comes out. Why is it coming out? Gravity. Gravity. You should not say there is hole in it. Because even without a hole, you hold it. I can drop it and come down. Everybody knows. All bodies should come down from apple. Correct? Now what I do? I take the copper tube. I take the copper tube. I'm going to drop the first material. It comes out. No problem. Once more comes out. Now, I am going to do the second material. I don't want it. It comes slowly. Yes. Somebody has seen that. I am going to drop it through that. And then I keep talking to you. I am not in a hurry. Then I go and catch it. You saw that? Where should I do it? Can I do it uh, with some white background? Yeah. That will be better. So, I am going to drop it now. See what happens. Not coming. No, now only it is coming. It's coming slowly. Why? What is this object? 
which i am dropping magnet magnet very good yes it is indeed magnet the other one is a simple aluminium cylinder this is aluminium so not magnet so the aluminium cylinder will come quickly no problem whereas magnet takes long time to come why only wrong answer attract what i meant maybe it may be trying to attract that metal for a long time and oh, magnet will attract the copper oh. it's not attracting magnet will attract pvc it's not attracting you okay. study sometimes in your school magnetic substance non magnetic substance correct yes sir wood paper plastic are all non magnetic substance they would say that is all not true really strictly okay strictly all objects in this world are all magnetic in some way or other because the force of attraction is present sir yes, either force of attraction or repulsion repulsion also is there repulsion is very important in magnetism that only tells me whether a object is magnet or not correct okay so they are classified as diamagnetic para yeah we heard all these words paramagnetic ferromagnetic yes, perimagnet like that there are number of classification what is difference don't worry that, that difference that there are a lot of difference between each one of them you have to understand what is the basic reason for objects being magnetic the basic reason is electrons whenever you have one single electron in the valence band instead of two electrons usually you have to have pair of electrons in some atoms there are only one electron in the outermost atom then what happens it produces magnetic effect that electron going around is equal to your current that current will produce a magnetic field you all know that who said that long time back michael faraday what on this he pushed the magnet inside a coil and connected the coil to a galvanometer and he showed that whenever he pushed the magnet the current was there so he called it electromagnetic induction correct you all know it he's a great guy as good as newton so when the magnet goes through this copper this copper is nothing like nothing but a coil of wire continuously wound it can be a solenoid so when i push a magnet through a solenoid there will be a electric field that electric field will produce a current so there will be a current through the copper which will produce a magnetic field the effect of the induced current and the induced magnetic field is to oppose the change that is happening on this magnet that is called lenz law have you studied anybody studied electromagnetic wave laws can you explain again sir once okay i'm saying whenever the magnet is pushed into a coil there will be a electric field because of that there will be an electric current we call it electromotive force like in a battery there is a voltage that voltage can drive a current copper being a good conductor even for very low voltage there will be a large current that will be flowing through this that will not affect me because i am outside the circuit even though i am holding it it is much more higher resistance for my skin and the body compared to the copper therefore it, the circuit is complete here itself so it goes very high current several amperes will flow and because of that there will be a magnetic field that magnetic field will oppose the motion of this magnet for flowing falling into this so there will be a force in the upward direction due to the induced current and the induced magnetic field there is a downward force which is constant due to mg and therefore these two forces at some stage depending upon the velocity with which it is falling when the object is falling after 1 second it will be 9.8 meter per second velocity after 2 second 19.6 meter per second after 3 3 into 9.8 per second i know that you know that right v is equal to 80 v is equal to u plus 80 u is zero initial velocity so v is equal to 80 a is in this case g 9.8 into t time after 1 second 9.8 meter per second is the velocity after 2 second 2 into 9.8 meter per second etc 
So the velocity keeps on increasing. When the velocity increases, that is called rate of change of flux, the magnetic flux. Therefore, the EMF, the voltage induced, will be proportional to the rate of change. That means proportional to velocity. As the velocity increases, the electric force will be increased. The current will increase. The magnetic upward force will increase. At some stage, this Mg will be balanced by the upward force due to the magnetic field. And there will be zero force on the magnet. When there is zero force, what will the magnet do? Stop. Will it stop? No object will stop. That is what Newton said in the first law. What is the Newton's first law? Everybody, everybody continues in its state of rest or of motion unless compelled by an external force. That means what? It's the greatest discovery that Galileo could see when there is no friction, there is no opposition, your body which is in motion will continuously move with the same velocity. It's the greatest discovery, I think. Because he, he never realized it in normal days, on our normal life, we cannot regain it. Because we always have friction, we always have air pressure, we have always have so many opposing force. So we never recognize that if all of them are absent, the body will be keep on moving. It has to be a Newton or a Galileo to tell us. That is the greatness of those people. So, when the total force on this magnet becomes zero at some place, beyond that, the body, whatever is the velocity at that time, when it these two balance, it will come with the same velocity slowly, so I can catch it. That is what is happening here. This is called terminal velocity. If I give you another example, you will understand very well. Somebody from an aeroplane jumps. When it, when it jumps, what do you will do? You will spread the parachute. Otherwise, you will not get his bones here. He has to spread his parachute. Once he spreads the parachute, what happens? The air pressure provides an upward force. And that depends on the velocity with which he is falling down. And the downward force, what is bringing him to the air is the gravity. Similar situation here. Here it is a magnetic force. There it is the frictional or the viscous forces of the air and therefore that is also opposing and so they both cancel at some height beyond which the fellow is not having any force acting on him including gravity. So he is coming with the same velocity, terminal velocity slowly and landing safely on air. What a wonderful thing happens. Same thing happens with raindrops. If raindrops are produced around 2-3 kilometers above, if you drop it, the raindrop will come and hit the ground with root of 2gh velocity. V square is equal to u square plus 2gh. 2g, yes, I can make it 2gh. U is zero anyway. V square is equal to 2gh. V is equal to root of tgh. Therefore, you find the velocity will be root of 2gh. If I go from around, what is that velocity? V is equal to root of 2 into g. Let me take 9 by 8 into approximately to 10. 2 into 10 into h, 2000 meters, 2 kilometers. What is this here? 2 into 10 into 2000. It is nothing but 200 meters per second. Because there are four zeros, there are how many zeros? Four zeros, therefore two zeros. Two, two twos are there, one, two, because of square root. So I have 200 meters per second. This, if I convert into kilometers per hour, it is, what is the velocity of the raindrop? 720 kilometers per hour. That is the velocity with which raindrop will come and hit the ground. If you are out on the rain, you, it will be like a bullet because this velocity is the velocity of the aeroplane in level flight. If the aeroplane comes and hits the twin tower in US, what happened? The whole building collapsed. What will happen to you and me and the plant on the ground? Everything will be destroyed. But we are all happy. We go and dance in the rain. Why? Because you have atmosphere. There is a viscous force. It reaches the terminal velocity very high up. And so it comes with 2 meter per second, 3 meter per second velocity. So you go and dance in the rain. Otherwise, what happens? So every small little thing that happens around us has got a purpose. If you understand this, you are able to appreciate why it is happening like that. 
so the most important idea challenge the most important idea i wanted to share with you today is that you have to learn everything on your own by performing some experiments or doing some calculations on your own and then make mistakes don't be up, upset about mistakes see why did i go wrong then understand where i have gone wrong and you will remember so when you make a error in the exam the teacher says minus 2 then you recognize next time you write the exam you remember this is the place i missed this unit the teacher reduced one mark so you will be very careful that is why people say practice makes a person perfect failures are stepping stone to success so don't be afraid of making errors and then do everything on your own learn on your own your teacher will only help he is called upadhyaya in hindi no in the sanskrit in hindi that means what learner along with you the teacher is continuously learning i am learning every day throughout my life still because every time i get a new student he asks a new question that makes me think in a new way and i get a new answer for that i'm so happy with that right and therefore there is no end to the learning and you have to learn everything on your own every subject here after you say i will learn on my own you seek the help of teacher when you get stuck they are very very helpful if you ask a teacher specifically sir i don't understand this every teacher will always try to help you and explain to you what it is.